gotten tangled up in my mask this morning, I guess. Well, good morning. It's great to see you and for us to be gathered here for worship. Um, wow, what a, a difference a couple of weeks makes. It's nice to, to see folks who are uh, feeling ready to come back in, who've gotten their vaccinations. And uh, of course, we're still practicing safe practices. We're gonna be doing that for a while, but it's wonderful to see folks returning to worship. And uh, we're so glad that you're here. If you're joining us online, we're, uh, uh, we're on television. We're glad for you to be with us today. Um, I'm Scott Kennedy. I'm the pastor here. Uh, been away for a week, so maybe I have to reintroduce myself. Uh, thanks to Steve for taking care of things for us last week. I um, want to lift up a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is, I, I think we all know that we've been doing vaccinations here uh, at the church uh, on Fridays. I, we're hosting it. Uh, uh, it's the National Guard who's doing it. And, uh, but, and it's been really hard to get signed up. I had a friend uh, just yesterday tell me they were, and they live in, in Oklahoma City, and they said they were trying to get signed up to come to Chickasha, and every time they looked to Chickasha, they wanted to come to Epworth to do it, and uh, they said it was always full. Well, I I can tell you this Friday, we still have uh, openings that are there. So if you're uh, uh, trying to get uh, signed up, there are, va there are vaccination openings for this Friday here at Epworth. It'll be convenient if uh, you can do that. I mean, in fact, if you want to pull out your phone right now and sign up, if you hadn't, that might be a great thing to do. Uh, just in encourage you to, to do that. You do it through the, the portal. Um, I know that they're getting, I don't know, getting ready to open up the next phase, all of phase two, um, that, that's uh, about to start happening. I don't think we've quite opened all that up yet, but they're in the process of it. So we wanna encourage you to, to get signed up there. Um, the choir is working on a special piece, so this is to choir members. Uh, the CDs that you all were to pick up are not quite ready yet, so it's just going to be pushed back a little bit uh, on picking those up, but uh, you'll get a notice about that, but just know that they're, they're not quite ready. Um, this uh, afternoon at 3 o'clock, and we'll be in the parlor, there'll be a SPRC meeting, and uh, on Tuesday... At 5.30, we'll have a finance committee meeting. That'll also be in the, the parlor. Um, we're feeling like we're able to get to the point where we can begin to have some of those meetings. Of course, you know, again, we're going to be spaced out. We're going to uh, uh, have, have those, uh, have our times together, and we're gonna wear our mask and follow good practices as well. So just want to, to lift those up to you. Those are the announcements we have for today. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find a bell. If any of you all have a bell to ring. I, I, whenever uh, Jerry came in this morning and he, you know, it's his first time to be out, first time to be back at church and, and I thought we should have a bell for people to ring, their, you know, their first time back and maybe, you know, we could, uh, that would be a fun thing. So we'll, uh, if you have one that maybe might work, you just let me know and we'll uh, get that set up starting next week and uh, just maybe a way to celebrate as uh, people make their way back. Um, those are our announcements for the day. Let us open our hearts, open our minds, uh, our spirits. Uh, God speaks to us in so many ways, through the community, through the experience of worship. Um, but we have to be open to receive it. And um, that's the first step. So let us take that moment to just open ourselves up so that God can speak to us this morning. Good morning. It would be like the gong for the gong show for me if I was to, you know. Let's rise for our call to worship this morning. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The firmament proclaims God's handiwork. From the sun's rising to its setting, the creation speaks day and night. Earth's creatures announce God's work. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. God's weakness is stronger than human strength. You may be seated. 
And it sounded so good up here. <laughs> Let's uh, join together with our prayer of the confession. We'll, we'll do this prayer together. We have come to your temple, loving God, because this is your place, not ours. We confess that we sometimes forget whose house this is. We forget that all the world belongs to you as we scramble for all we can claim for ourselves. Our actions deny your love, which is at the heart of your perfect law. Our minds have justified the bending and breaking of your law to suit current trends and feelings. We cry out for forgiveness and the opportunity for a fresh start. Clear us of hidden faults and redeem us from those we recognize and confess. Amen. Good morning. Will you guys please stand? We will start with Revelation song this morning.
Amen. You may be seated. Hey, Dad. Mm -hmm. Can I get a bike? Sure. Really? Yeah. How are you going to pay for it? I don't have any money, so... Oh. Hmm. Well, there you have it. just trying to help. Why are you so offended? It's selling makeup. It's a job. It's a door-to-door -door salesman. We need the money. I'm doing the best I can. Are you? What's that supposed to mean? What's that supposed to mean? Now just do what you want to do. For down payment, for, for training uh, classes. There it is. There it is. Look, the car needs to be inspected. The house is falling apart. I can't even pay for the boys' braces. And I need a new pair of shoes for a job interview. Interview? What interview? You haven't even applied look, to anything. Look, I'm going to tell you just the way I told him. If you want something, go get it. Don't ask me for money. Mom? Hey, buddy. For your makeup job. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and verses 18 through 25, as we listen for God's word for us this morning. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. 
For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish wisdom, the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, there's a <clears throat> man who... Uh, had a business and things were doing well and so he decided to open up a new store and uh, expanded you know and, and opened up a, a new location and on the day of the opening uh, someone had sent him flowers and so he had a bouquet of flowers and he took the card to, to read it and the card was a, a card of uh, condolence um, and he was kind of, you know, wasn't sure what to, to make of that. And uh, pretty soon he got a phone call from the florist and said, we made a mistake. We got the cards mixed up. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, he said, okay, I, that, that makes sense. And I, you know, businessman, I understand mistakes can be made. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, and then the, the florist said, but, um, you know, my problem is now I've got to call the other party um, I sent your card to a, a funeral party. And, uh, and, and, and he said, well, what did that one say? And it said, well, congratulations on your new location. <laughs> and, you know, um, we know in faith that it's through the cross that uh, we can count on a new location. Um, it's through what Christ does for us on the cross that we experience uh, redemption. Um, we can have assurance that there'll be a new location for us, that uh, we not only have Christ's presence with us in this life, but we have uh, his presence with us in the life to come. And that's a powerful thing uh, to know that and to live with that security. It's what the power of the cross holds for us. Uh, the cross gives us the assurance. To the world, the cross looks like foolishness, um, Paul, in Paul's day, I mean, we, we've grown accustomed to the, cro the cross, maybe even to the point where, I, I don't want to say callous, but we, uh, you know, we don't, the cross was the instrument of execution at the time of Jesus' death. Um, some, you know, most of our crosses are gold and they're pretty, and, and I have nothing to, against pretty crosses, um, but we miss the terrifying nature of the cross. When people were executed on the cross, they were, they were usually at the edge of town. So uh, it was almost like a warning to people um, to stay in line uh, or else the power of the Roman Empire will come down upon you. Uh, the, the cross uh, was a gruesome thing. A terrible way to die. Uh, some crucifixions that you see uh, help illustrate that very well. Some are, uh, they, they really say to us something about the power of, of the cross through the suffering that Christ took on to, to go to the cross. Um, it, I know was planning to do a lot of the sermon, uh, changed it up obviously for this week, but uh, last week, and, and again, Steve uh, very ably stepped up, but the video that we had for last Sunday had uh, images of two different types of crosses, a crucifix that has uh, Jesus on the cross, and then the, the empty cross, one kind of symbolizing Christ's sacrifice for us, the other symbolizing the victory of the cross over death uh, in the resurrection, the empty cross is a sign of that. Um, it's not one is right and the other wrong. They're both teach us something about our faith and, 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 and the gruesomeness of the cross 
was foolishness to the world in, in Paul's day. To Jews, it didn't make any sense. To uh, the, it, I mean, they expected God to come in power, the Messiah to be one who came with great authority, um, not as someone who would be crucified. To, to, to Greeks, it just seemed like foolishness. They were interested in learning about all different kinds of religious beliefs, but to a God who dies, it seemed like foolishness. But to those of us who are being saved, Paul says, uh, it is the power of God. The cross is the power of God. Um, we preach, we proclaim Christ crucified um, because in his death, we are reconciled and we are made whole uh, to God. I was thinking, what are symbols of ways that we think we get ahead in life? And uh, you know, the, the cross is probably not the one most people think of. Um, I did an interesting thing a couple of weeks ago. It was the first time I'd ever done this. I uh, bought a scratcher card. I'd never bought one of those. Um, I didn't win a thing. Probably won't buy another one, you know. Uh, I, but, you know, I was thinking about how in our culture we have, uh, maybe this is a symbol of <laughs> the way so many live, that uh, we want to fix it now. We want something quick that'll take care of it. Uh, just give me a million dollars. Or in this case, I, 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 I was going to buy, I heard there were these new million dollar scratcher cards and they were $30. I'm just too cheap. I bought the $20 card. So I could only won 250000 but I didn't win that either, you know. And, uh, the, you know, the, but I think a symbol of our culture that um, we just want to get ahead so fast, just give it to me now, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take it that way. And um, visiting with a member of our church who had worked at a convenience store for a long time, talked about all the, I think, maybe misery that he saw of people coming in to purchase a scratcher card in hopes that it might pay out and turn things around in their life. I guess when your life feels so broken, maybe you're willing to reach out for something that desperate. Um, I don't know. So on the one hand, in our culture, we have the scratcher card, the lottery. On the other hand, we have the cross. One, maybe a symbol of how we would love for it to be the other symbol of how it is, that Christ crucified uh, gives us new life and new opportunity in life. Um, this one happens to be from a, a friend in Kenya uh, that was carved there and uh, he gave to us. We proclaim Christ crucified. To those of us who are being saved, the cross is the power of God. When we see it, it should always be the reminder of our salvation, um, of what Christ does for us, of who Jesus is. And Jesus, in the lesson from last week, says that, uh, that he's headed to the cross. And um, the disciples didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that our loved ones are going to die. That, that we don't want to hear that. They, he, he said, but then I'll be raised three days from now. They, didn't, they couldn't get to that. They, just, they wanted to push away where he told them that, that was the case. And then he, he says to them that uh, not only will I take up the cross, but if you want to follow me, you're going to have to take up the cross as well. Um, a way of self-giving. And I was thinking about what it is to follow the cross, and that is to, to live the cruciformed life, um, a life of the cross. That's what that means. Cruciform simply means shape of the cross, in the form of the cross. That uh, Jesus goes to the cross to restore our life, and then we take up the cross and we live the cruciform life, a life of the cross, of giving ourselves for others, of looking out not just for our self-interest, but for the interest of the other, 
of looking to God as our source of salvation, not uh, our human strength, not on scratcher ticket or lottery ticket that pays off, um, that we look to Christ for our hope and our salvation. That's where we find it. Shape of the cross. And I started thinking about the shape of the cross. Um, I think it really does symbolize for us uh, the, the practice of faith um, in the vertical uh, Christ comes down to us and the cross is planted in a way that brings salvation to our lives. Uh, he changes us by what he does. It is a symbol in that vertical sense of our relationship to God. Um, remember when Jesus was asked, what are th what's the most important law? He said, it's to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's about knowing that there's always this vertical dimension of our life that connects us to him. And so we know Christ in our life through that vertical dimension of the cross, his pouring himself out, his coming down for us, planting the cross to claim us and to take our salvation, to give us salvation. That's the vertical dimension of our faith. Um, that would just be a pole if that were all it was, wouldn't it? Uh, it takes that cross beam going across, and um, the horizontal, which is the symbol of our relationship with each other, isn't it? Um, that Christ comes to bring a new way in how we live with one another, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, the vertical and the horizontal, to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, that's something that lies at the very heart of who we are. Uh, when we look at the cross, we should see that as well, that it calls us to change our life and our relationship with everyone, with each other, that we live in such a way that we are always looking out for the best interest of the other, that we are always living in a way that is uh, self-giving in the way that Christ gave himself for us. It, it, it's the transformed life, living in the shape of the cross, love of God, and love of others, that our life is reconciled to God's vision of the world, and that we are able to live that out fully and completely. Um, we are in the season of Lent. Uh, began, began that with Ash Wednesday, and um, the cards that are up here are prayer cards that have a prayer on the back for the season of Lent. Um, a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of prayers during the season of Lent often feel uh, heavy. And I, I wanted it to maybe, maybe we felt a lot of heavy lately. Maybe we needed to feel a little lighter. And so the prayer we put on there was one that maybe we can begin to see the lift and we can begin to see the power of Easter coming um, and not as, as heavy on the cross. Uh, on these, uh, since we weren't able to have an Ash Wednesday service together, uh, I think we had about a foot of snow on Ash Wednesday. Um, we made up a couple hundred cards and uh, just took the ashes, made the form of the cross on each of those. Maybe a good practice this year is to, to maybe take one of those and put it in a place where it reminds you, where you're able to uh, say that prayer. Maybe you're able to look at that cross and to think about your relationship with God, that vertical sense, and how that changes your relationship with others. Um, maybe it means that person who's always so hard for you to love, that you find a way to move over that because God loves them. God doesn't get hung up on those behaviors that maybe push you away. It, it, it maybe it's a, it's a way for you to step through that to take on God's sense of love, to take on Christ's sense of love, and let that be the fullness of which you live your life out of. I don't know, when I look at the cross, I see so many things, um, but the thing I see most is that Christ took up the cross to set us free, and that by the way of the cross, the power of the cross, 
we can live a transformed life that changes the world. Amen. Next part of our worship service is our offering. Uh, if you're watching us on Channel 6 or on uh, YouTube or, or Facebook Live, uh, there are several different ways that you can give. Uh, you can go to our website, epworth.info, and on the top right-hand corner of the website, you can pay through, uh, through push pay. You can also mail a check to 420 West Iowa or just bring it by the church sometime. For those of us that are in the uh, congregation today, we will not be passing the plates uh, for a while still, but you will find them up here at the corners, and you can uh, feel free this morning to uh, drop off your offering as uh, on your way out as we have our time of offering and meditation this morning. We come now to share in our time of uh, preparation, the great Thanksgiving for communion. You'd think I would get better at this, you know, but uh, let us join together as we, we pray to the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always 
in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your, holy, or through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Communion is prepared, and we are invited to come forward to share. Um, again, we're using the individual cups. You'll have to peel it off, take the uh, wafer, eat, and receive it. Uh, then peel off the next layer to receive the, the juice, to drink and receive it. You're welcome to come forward to get one, um, to come kneel at the rail if you would like, or to, to stand and uh, to receive those. Um, and even return back to your, your seat if that's how you would choose. Uh, the gospel is open to all of us and Christ invites us all to come and to share in the gospel feast. Let us come forward.
Will you please stand? song of sending forth today we will be doing mighty to save
us go into the dark, not afraid and not alone. Let us hope by some good pleasure safely to.